Hello, I'm Laurie Serafini, and today I'm going to be talking to and interviewing Andrew Wilson Annan. He's a customer and a client of CUA, and on the other hand, he's also doing some consulting with senior management. And what we're going to do today is talk to him about his two experiences with the bank in getting a home loan for a new home, building a new home, and we're going to look at uh, his feedback, his thoughts and feelings in dealing with CUA. And the outcome is for us to look at some learnings, how we can improve our interaction, our communication skills and our customer service as CUA and as staff at CUA. So 12 months ago, I applied for a home loan with CUA, my first experience, um, to refinance our existing loan. Yep. And we were looking to buy some land as well for building a new home as well. And um, I, some interesting parts of the process that quite surprised me, given that mortgage lending is CUA's bread and butter. Um, with respect to, let's start with the application form itself. Yep. Um, I found it quite misleading. Um, I wasn't sure which number sometimes to put in which box. And, and, and given my background and experience of being, as part of my role, redeveloping application processes, etc., if I'm having that confusion, then I always wonder what other people who are maybe aren't as financially literate uh, are having as an experience as well. But that, that was part of that process. I found myself at times having to chase the lender. Um, I didn't always find the, the communication being really as felt as it was centered on me. So there were some times where I would question where we were at in the process. So you're dealing face to face? No, no. I, I met the, the lender once in Melbourne okay. and everything else was done by, via email and sometimes via phone. Give me a bit more detail. I, I would expect, if not no more than a common courtesy, that if you put a call in or if you put an email in, it, it, a response isn't left hanging. Yep. Was that frustrating? Because it, it sounds frustrating to me. How did you feel? Well, it was my first experience of CUA. I mean, CUA is a brand. I'd never heard of them before. Um, sort of, you know, six months prior to that. Yep. Um, how did I feel? <clears throat> Disappointed. This was the first credit union that I'd done business with. Yes. And so, not being a customer, not being a client, but being a member. Yep. And trying to understand what is that value that I should expect as being a member. I, in my mind, I started to think, well, what, what, what is membership? What do I get for that? I haven't paid anything for it financially. Yep. But if I'm showing a commitment to believe in the organization, what the organization is looking to do in terms of <clears throat> make profit, to invest back into membership services, products, that, that whole value proposition, then this isn't with a tier one. The, the level of interaction should be a little bit different, yes. or that was my expectation. Yes, yes. What were you thinking uh, when he wasn't getting back to you and you weren't hearing back from the lender? Um, I would like to know that the loan has been submitted. I would like to know what, how long I might expect that decision to take, and then obviously when when the response is coming through, you know, how I can manage that. Tell us what happened next. Well, I mean, the deal was pretty simple. Refinance, you get the security, you know, it's pretty yes. simple. So it was approved. Yes. Um, we did have some complications at the time. Um, so another thing that uh, makes me look a little bit not normal. Tell us about that. Is that my wife is ill. So my, my wife is terminally ill. Okay. And so at the time, knowing that she is dying and being, you know, knowing that she doesn't work, she hasn't worked for some time and she won't ever work again. So she won't contribute to the, the finances in that respect. So I did suggest, well, I think the, the loan could be in just my name. Yes. But in a, in a subsequent phone call, I was asked, um, we, we were talking again about we, it was going to be written in, in joint names. And I said, well, I don't really see why that's appropriate given the circumstances. 
And the response was, oh, can you remind me what the circumstances are? Okay. Now, there's only so many times you like to keep going around telling everyone that your wife's dying. It's not a yeah. very nice thing to keep yeah. saying, and yeah. it's not other people's problems. It is mine. But of all the things that you could remember, I would appreciate it. If, that, if that's what membership is, is developing the relationship and building on that. And I get that people are busy. I'm just another, well, I question, am I another number? am I another member number or is CUA trying to do something different in the market? And what I would also like to see is that the point of contact that I have into an organization, be it a bank, be it an insurance company, be it whoever, they are the point of representation. That person is the whole of CUA to me. Correct. They're my point, they're my way in, yep. and whatever happens in the background, I don't care. No. Um, so let's move to the second example. Yeah. <clears throat> so it was this year, it was within the, well, it was within the last three months. So it's all fresh. Okay. Um, we, set, we settled two weeks ago. So, okay. um, so it all worked. Well done. In the end. Yes. Um, I knew what was going to happen. I knew how we would work through this so proactively before we went on holiday in June we applied for the loan to get an approval in principle so we had another go at the application form yeah how'd you go this time yeah, I mucked it up apparently I was um, I was a little bit too honest with my other expenses oh I see and um, when they drop out into the bottom section um, that is quite sensitive on the the application so I got some feedback which I did value and appreciate saying, oh, are you sure about this? And maybe you should, oh, have you, have you, double, have you actually double counted these? And when yes. we talked through it, I said, well, your, your stupid form has led me to put them down twice and I get it now. Now you seem patient, you seem very loyal, but how were you really feeling? So when you haven't heard anything for a week, having been told the application's been submitted, and then you flick off an email going, how are we going? I expect to hear back within a week. And I don't believe I should always be doing the chasing. I am time poor. I've got other things to concentrate on. Yep. Anyway. Well, you are the client after all. Sometimes. Yeah, we thought, we'd expect. So we, um, we did get the loan approved, 550,000 in my back pocket. That's good to know. Good. That, that little thing around serviceability and expenses was all fine and we move on. We came back from our holiday and we had to find a house. We'd had, we had this great problem when we came back from holiday. So um, our, our current house was located on four acres in um, the Maston Ranges. Yep. Those properties can be interesting in terms of how long they take to sell. To sell. Understand. We were realistic because we're building an, a house and so therefore we thought we'll put it on the market there's no rush, see what happens. We go off to Europe. Five days into our holiday, we sell the house. Fantastic. So it's great, great yeah. problem. Yeah, great problem to have. But you know, so we've got a sold house. Yep. We've got an approval in principle. Yep. We come back from our holiday, knowing that given the time frames, we can't move straight into the new house that we're building. We have to go and find something else. Do we rent, do we buy? We went through all that. We decided we would buy a house that we would live in for the interim, and then we'd look to keep it as an investment property, rent it later on. Okay. Pretty simple. The house we looked at and we decided upon was of lesser value than the house, than the approval in principle that we had. So I thought, a done deal. Yes. I mean, what, or where do I sign? Yes. Where, 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 we were within the 90 days or three months or whatever it is, I can't remember actually the, the time frame as how long the approval in principle stands for. But I got a surprise. What happened? And the surprise was that I tried to do the right thing by my wife. I did not want the scenario of having to move out of a house one day, move into another house the next day. So I checked in with the lender and I said, look, this house is available. We haven't signed the contract yet, but we want to settle in 30 days. 
is that going to be a problem? And he said, no, no, it's, it's, it's good because all the settlements apparently in Queensland are 30 days. I didn't know that. But okay. he said, we're used to doing 30 days. Okay. 30 days is fine. We would have preferred, probably maybe preferred 45, but I'll make it happen. I'm going, great. That, that's all I need to know. Yeah. You'll make it happen. Fantastic. So there's a bit of a process where you have to kind of go back from approval in principle, the numbers, because you know, you've got an actual purchase price at this point, so the numbers get resubmitted. Yep. And having understood the whole situation of where we're at, what we're looking to achieve in the, the medium term of building a house, having another house as an investment, et cetera, et cetera, I got a call back saying, uh, um, it's a bit tight, this one. I said, oh, what's tight? What do you mean? And he said, well, because you're purchasing the new house prior to selling the other house, we have this four week period where you're going to be doubling up. Whatever, I get that. It's about $2,000 in interest. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine for me. I'm willing to pay $2,000 for the convenience of being able to move out of one house as I move into another, clean the new house, clean the old house with a, a sick partner. Yep. It's difficult. Okay. You don't just do that. Moving off of four acres, moving on to a half acre, yep. it's different. Yep. Stuff happens. Um, the response was, oh, you, you're right on the boundary regarding serviceability. And I think he was telling me it in this language because he knew I knew stuff. I don't, yeah. I don't know that he would necessarily have said it that way to another person, I don't know. But. So I said, it's not a problem. It's just not an issue. And the response was, well, you're under our threshold. And I said, well, what does that mean? Tell me, well, what are we doing here? And he said, oh, um, well, what I can do is I can change the numbers. I can save for that period of the month overlap that you're going to rent out your previous home for one month. Okay. And that income that you get for that will supplement from the serviceability perspective and you'll look okay and you'll go above our threshold. And I just said, do what you have to do. I don't care. I won't, I won't be renting the house out. Yes. But if that's what works for you, you know where we're going with this. You know from my savings and for a, a four week period, I can cover that extra interest. So just whatever. Later that day, I get a call back. So if you are saying, Andrew, that you're going to rent out your property for four weeks. I'll need you to go and engage with an estate agent to get a rent appraisal on your house. This is getting complicated. I've got better things to do. I really have got better things. I've got an approval in principle. I've actually come for an loan that's less yes. than the original. Yes, I get it. I thought we had an understanding of where I'm at, yes, I'm self-employed. Yes, I'm a single income earner in our family. Yes, I can't rely on my wife contributing to the loan. Yeah. Apart from that, I'm pretty normal. My response was um, a little bit impatient. My response was there's no way in pol the politest terms that I'm going to an estate agent um, I encouraged the person just to put the loan up through credit with the narrative, with the story, with the understanding of what we're trying to achieve here and see what happens. And he said, okay, I'll do that. Okay, that's the way we'll go. And after a period of time, again, through a period of wondering how we were going, and this was different for the second one. This was different because I had signed a contract. I had committed to 30 days. Yes, correct. And so now in this example, time isn't on my side. 
I was still relatively patient because I knew it would go through eventually, but I still didn't get a proactive management of communication around it's going okay or there's another issue that we need to deal with. It's just silence. And silence can be a good thing, but silence isn't always a good thing. And I, I would just really appreciate just some comms around, it's been submitted, we haven't heard back yet, but we should hear back within a day, two days. If you don't hear back from me within that time frame, I will get back to you and I'll let you know when you will hear. It's simple stuff. Yeah. If that, if that is the value proposition of how a member of CUA <clears throat> is treated differently and managed differently from a relationship perspective to being with one of the bigger banks, that's what I would like. That's what I would value. Did you maybe think that the CUA is stuck on process rather than the person? I don't know. I don't, I don't have a sense of CUA in the past. I've got no baseline as to where they've come from. Um, working in the Brisbane office, I've certainly picked up that as a culture they were an organisation that did what they were told. Okay. Um, we'd always done things this way. Yeah. That's how we do things around here. Um, certainly now there's more an encouragement of challenging process change, moving forward, being curious about why do we do the things the way we do them and being courageous to challenge is there a better way now because I really hope that others aren't left wondering the way I was. Yeah. Because I think it's just a, it, it's a space that the organisation can control. It doesn't really cost that much money to do it. it doesn't cost that much time it's a it's a way of being to try and put yourself in the members shoes look we, we can sit here and talk about the bigger process and I get from an individual lenders perspective they go they don't control that whole process that's kind of done to them to some extent but what they can change is the how and I'd love to be able to refer my friends, not just to CUA, but to that person, the person that I've had a good experience with, the person that can get me over the line, get me the loan, help me with whatever. Yeah. We're all humans. We all want to connect with people and develop relationships. I don't think it's that hard. I hope I'm not expecting too much. Many thanks to Andrew for sharing his uh, experiences and his customer service at CUA. There's definitely some lessons for us, some learnings for us in terms of raising the bar, looking at our professionalism, looking at our communication skills and our customer service. And with the time left, maybe we can start brainstorming and looking for some of those learnings and those experiences.